These episodes are being brought to you by Woman R's. Our mission at Woman R's is to make it fun and easy for you to find inspirational and educational content online. Interviews like this are part of our production, as well as in the future bringing you some live courses and on-demand courses with thought leaders and experts from around the world. Hey guys, welcome to Tuesdays with Tildy. Recently I had the opportunity to sit down with Eileen Schaefer and have a conversation with her about how she started her work with women in transition. Kind of share a little bit of your own personal experience. What I thought is, gosh, there's got to be a way for women who do choose to be, um, work, I, I call it working for love, um, but working at home with their kids as opposed to working for pay outside of the home, um, there's got to be a way to continue to develop yourself and your sense of identity in the process of nurturing your family and kids. And so that's what inspired me to go back to get my um, degree in counseling psychology with an emphasis in life transitions counseling. And it was a perfect program for me because it was really about working with people who are fundamentally healthy and managing a transition. And I thought, gosh, that's a great way to describe motherhood is you're fundamentally healthy, you're going through this, but it's a huge life transition. So that's how I got started in this practice, loved it. And it was during a time um, when I went back to school when a lot of moms were starting to think, this is tough trying to, you know, be full-time mom, or I'm sorry, be full-time in a career outside of the home and raise the kids and do everything I want to be doing and doing it well. And so we started to see a little bit of a trend um, of, of women deciding, I'm going to take some time to really focus in on being, um, and I, I, I'm still struggling for a term for at home, because I don't know any mom who sits around at home all day. So I don't like the at home mom, but that person. Um, so anyway, that's um, what, where I started, is working with those women to help really identify who they are, who they want to be, and continue to grow individually at the same time raising others. So that's how the practice began. And then I started seeing the trend of these same women saying, okay, my kids are where I feel like I want them to be. And I now I'm itching for something to um, enrich my life on top of this um, parenting. So, um, and then feeling like, I've kind of lost a sense of what my interests are, what I value, and what I want now. And so those were the um, kind of the new group that I started working with was how do I kind of regroup and think what's important to me at this stage of life and what do I want that to look like? And, um, and really, quite honestly, often forgetting interests and skills that they have. And it's like, I don't, have, I don't know where I am in life. And so that's who I've been working with for years now absolutely love it always inspired by my clients um and so that's taken me to where i was before i went back to positive psychology then i um and the positive psychology what was so exciting when i found this program that i had the privilege of meeting you and all the other wonderful um, classmates that we had that there was much of that was infused in the counseling program that i actually did However, it was such a new field that it really, there were just articles here and there, and it really hadn't taken off. Um, and it was just at the very tippy, tippy point of getting um, some positive psychology things into the counseling program, but it really started to open up and the research started happening and they um, took it into a whole new direction with Martin Seligman leading um, and you know, obviously having a master's in, or master's in um, positive psychology. That took off after I went to graduate school. So, so fun to get to um, layer that on top of my education in a deeper way. So that, that's where I am. And then uh, Mindful Stepping, as you said, was inspired by taking the positive psychology class and really combining it with the walking that I do with my clients anyway. I thought, gosh, how can I take everything we've learned, make it really practical in bite-sized pieces? So even if someone's not going to pay, whether it's to work with me individually or another professional, they still have these tools because I want to make sure positive psychology is accessible to as many people as possible. So that's how that came about. Well, and you know what I love about these cards and, and you and I discussed it a little bit um, last night um, was the bite side, bite size pieces, you know, and not trying to do all of this at one time, because when you're, when you're starting new practices, you know, it's kind of overwhelming if you're trying to do too much. Um, Absolutely. So, so I love these, like, I'm going to read off um, 
one of these because I think like pause you have different sections right I mean you have positivity you have meaning you have achievement and there's another one um, and achievement it actually it's on the original one it has achievement which is actually moved to accomplishment but it's um, positivity engagement I think you engagement. do engagement and relationship meaning and accomplishment I think now you've got them all yeah, but okay, so so I want to give the people sort of an idea of what's on one of the cards, right? That makes oh, it easy for you to kind of um, just look look at, like this one is on positivity, and it says, observe your environment, the people and things that you pass along the way, and my, being mindful that this is on your walk. This is These are the things that you're supposed to be concentrating on while you're walking. Um, it says, observe your environment. Um, what do you notice that gives you a sense of gratitude and or makes you smile? Take a moment to saturate yourself in each thing you witness with grateful eyes. And so all those things, I mean, they might seem simple, but I think for, for a lot of us that are busy, we have that rabbit trail, right? That's easy to concentrate on. We start thinking or worrying about what we're going to do when we get back from the walk or, you know, we lose that sense of presence and mindfulness. And so, um, I think I just think these are so easy, you know, and yeah. to carry it with us so that when we are on that rabbit trail, maybe just look back and say, okay, I'm supposed to be admiring the environment. <laughs> go back to that moment. Yeah. Let's go back to that. Well, and that was, well, that was the goal. And I'm so glad that that's what you're picking up from them. It really is. I, so many times people, said, gosh, Eileen, you should write a book. And I've thought about that over and over again. Okay, I, I do want to write a book. And then I realized, I don't know about you, but I have a stack of fabulous books by my bedside by amazing authors, researchers, that's just a wealth of knowledge. But by the time I get into bed at whatever time after I've got the kids to sleep and, you know, Peter and I have had our couple time and then I'm sitting down, I'm thinking, Oh, I don't know that I could read, you know, a whole a whole book or whatever and with and retain the information by the time, you know, because I'm so tired. So what I really thought is again, I the research is out there, the books are out there, there's fabulous books out there for people that do want to read a full book. But I really and this is also with my clients, it's where are you? Where do you want to go? And it's like, let's start to put practical pieces, really bite size and that really works well with how our brain works too. Little bite size that keeps you engaged. It's not too overwhelming where you say, ah, I can't do this. It's little bite size pieces that you can digest, put into play. You're at work, you're feeling stressed, grab a card, go. You just um, have been, I, I have some that are great for if you're interview prepping and you're thinking, I don't know what I bring to the table. I've totally, I'm, I'm not sure who I am at this point. Grab your card, go for a walk. And some of them you could spend a lot more time on. And some are as simple as what you just read. That is just a, a quick zap to your, you know, to your positivity or your, it's a little, I call them boost cards because it's a positivity boost. It's a relationship boost. It's yeah. little bits that you can do relatively easy. Yeah. So tell people a little bit about why, why you walk and talk <laughs> because it's different and, than just going, you know, to coffee and meeting for a coaching session or anything like, I mean, but tell people what I love about you is that, you know, what happens physically to us when we're yeah. actually walking and talking. So talk a little bit in depth about what happens to us when we're actually moving and discussing. Absolutely. I would say one of the things that happens immediately is it puts me and my client in partnership, in collaboration. We're walking side by side as opposed to them walking into my office, I'm across the table, or even, even if I'm not necessarily a table between us, um, but at the same time, there's something that I am, I have all the answers. I know exactly what they need, they come to me. And in this process, I make it super clear I don't have the answers. They, they are for sure the experts on their life. But what I can do is be their partner, be their um, collaborator, their partner in crime in terms of asking the questions and helping them to start to see possibly themes. And um, I'm constantly looking for hints and clues of things that they'll reveal on the walk. And walking side by side really allows us to have that partnership. And it also, particularly for those new clients, it allows 
kind of those high nerves to just start to dissolve and fade away when we're outside so that they really, if I'm working with someone that's high stressed and on top of it, they're high stressed because they're meeting with a professional that so, you know, they're supposed to be pulled together. They're up here and they're not, their brain isn't where it needs to be to get to a calm place and really get some clarity around what they're doing. So I would say that's the number one thing is that collaborative partnership of walking side by side as opposed to sitting across. Then the movement also literally moves you. I know that sounds so crazy, but the movement moves you and it moves you mentally. And so as you're walking where, um, if, again, if you're sitting in a seat, you can feel very stuck. It's like, I don't know where to go. I have no idea what my interests are. I'm just sitting here and it's, come on, something come to me. But when you're walking, that movement really allows you to kind of um, free think, if you will. And so your mind just kind of can wander much more freely. You also start to see things that on the, on our path that might trigger something you see, you know, I'll be walking with someone and they'll see kids, you know, playing and they'll say, you know, gosh, when I was a kid, blah, blah, blah. Or I've always enjoyed working with kids, X, Y, Z, or you see, um, I'm trying to think a building being um, built and they say, gosh, you know, I've always loved architecture and I've never done anything about it. So it just, your surroundings provide kind of some, some feedback for you. And it also, like I said, your thoughts don't get stuck. They become unstuck um, while walking. And I think the last thing is it just really does allow you to calm, I, which I kind of addressed already, but it calms the brain and lowers your stress levels. Um, the, the movement without question. And if you're trying to work through something in life, the last thing you need is more stress by the process. So you want the process to help minimize the stress. Um, And lastly, it's funny with, you know, as you know, with positive psychology in our course, we did the VIA strengths assessment. Mm -hmm. And it was, when my results came back, my very top one was appreciation of beauty and excellence. And I thought, I definitely do, but I'm surprised that's top but it absolutely makes sense with the work that I'm in. Um, and again, being in an office for me feels for, and again, for me, everybody's so different, but with me, it feels stale and it feels stagnant. Even if it's a beautiful office, it still feels stagnant, but being outside and being able to enjoy the beauty and nature, it allows me to be my best so that I can be the best for my client. Right. So, right. And I think a lot of times also, we forget just how, you know, like if we're in an office all day long and you start to feel a little bit of stress or anxiety, how, how much it helps just to go outside for five minutes, you know, and go for a walk, take that deep breath and kind of recenter yourself, um, you know, alleviating some of that stress so that you can walk back into the building almost new, you know, with a new sense of self, you know, or centeredness. Absolutely. And it's, it's so funny because our knee-jerk reaction is if you're at work and you're feeling stressed, it's like, okay, I just need to get more done. And you're sitting at your computer trying to do more. And, and it just, it's, it's not, it, it becomes a cycle that you want to break, even though you know you need to break it, but you don't break it. So you're sitting there trying to do more. And then if you just say, you know what, I'm going to take 10 minutes, walk outside and go. And that, again, with the cards, what I found, um, some people have been reporting back to me on how they're using it. They'll take them out in the middle of work or with even with a colleague who they're having a tough time with and to be able to go out and kind of ask each other some questions. Right. And even without these cards, it's still a great idea if you're with a colleague whether you're having a tough time or not, just to go out and have that sense of connection with somebody else while walking yeah. is a great kind of hit. It's the hit the reset button. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, um, I got invited last night, last minute, because I'm here in New York. For those of you that are watching via Facebook and weren't in on the very beginning, um, Eileen is in Seattle, Washington, and I'm in New York City, um, today and tomorrow uh, visiting the United Nations uh, with Empire and a Billion Women 2020 and that group. Um, But I was fortunate enough that one of the women with EBW 2020 was going to a, um, to a seminar last night on personal growth. And it was by Jennifer Grace, who's a Hay House author. And the topic was uh, getting unstuck. And so, you know, 
I went and it was like an hour and a half sort of an intro, intro class. But um, I loved it because, you know, in, in the class, um, it wasn't necessarily the walking, but the, my point is that you can do any of these things and get that recenteredness right because what we're really wanting to do is get balance come back to ourselves you know to gain more clarity focus all those things um but Absolutely. all we had to do was sit there and and um and really do the five senses right um listen you know uh what do you hear you know inhale what do you smell Kind of run your tongue on the back of your teeth, on your teeth, where you know, what do you taste? I mean, little things like that. Um, look around you. What do you see? And it was amazing. I mean, because we were blown into going all day yesterday. Um, well, I was just walking everywhere and trying to get stuff done. Um, but just to do that little bit, I mean, it was just so relaxing. So relaxing. Yes. And I think that we often forget that if we take those 10 minutes, we actually will probably gain an hour in our day because we'll be able to make decisions so much faster. Absolutely. Along those lines, I love that exercise too. And it is, it's one thing that you forget to do, but it, it can, it can stop time. Mm -hmm. I, my daughter had asked me the other day, she said, I feel like time's going so quickly. How, how can I stop, you know, how can we stop time? And I was just um, looking, I think it might've been on our um, Facebook page for um, the positive psychology class. And if it wasn't there, I read it in one of, one of my um, different emails that came my way. But again, there's so much coming out about savoring and what you're talking about is that ability to also savor and to kind of stop it. It almost has that essence of stopping time to be able to savor where you are and really just um, let it saturate you, if you will. So, um, and, and we do, we're running so quickly to be able to, you know, figure or, if, yeah, figuratively stop time is something that we, I think, all of us crave in a way. Going back to the women in transition, you know, have you seen an involvement with the women that you've been working with? Um, do you mainly work with moms or has it, you know, now that, Maybe some, a lot of them are becoming empty nesters or going into entrepreneurship. You know, is there an involvement that you're seeing? Absolutely. And those, and the empty nesters, I would still keep in kind of my mom group of clients because I think once you become, you know, once you have a child, it's, you know, the motherhood role, it just changes through the phases, but always, you know, always a mom um, and the demands, um, the demands and joys are different at different stages. Um, so I would say I definitely, the majority of my clients are moms whose kids are already in um, primary education or older and moving forward. Definitely the ones whose kids have launched and gone to college and then there's um, thinking, okay, what's next for me? And it's not always work, work for pay, but it's just how do I continue, you know, it, as we talk about in positive psychology, to continue to have that growth mindset and how do I embrace growth and learning and feeling engaged with life. And so outside now that um, so much of my purpose and meaning has been wrapped around making sure that I've, I'm raising successful adults. So now I want to re, refocus the attention on me. And so I definitely have clients um, who are going through that. I also have many clients who are college age students that are moving on to um, that next phase of life after college, which I love because before I started my private practice, I worked at UC Berkeley for years um, doing college advising um, and working with student leaders and student organizations. And so I have a sweet or a fond, a fond space to my heart for the college age as well. And that exciting time of life when kind of the whole world is your oyster and it's like, what's next? And I feel like that's true at any stage of life, but there's something particularly exciting for this group because it's really their first time of not having all of life prescribed for them and the doors kind of open up. And so well, it's exciting. It's also incredibly intimidating, overwhelming. There's huge feelings that come with that. So working with those students is um, something that's I've been doing more and more recently. And one of my favorite things that I do with those students as well as with my moms is interview prep. I love helping individuals 
prep for interviews because one thing I always think is I can, you know, I can be talking to someone and I think, oh my gosh, they have this and this and this to offer, but they don't see it. And so how to help someone see the value and the beauty that they bring to the table. And then once you get that, how do you communicate it in a way that someone can hear and understand? And it's really interesting, I think, and you'll, I, I'll be interested to hear your thoughts on this. For women, we are often, we hold back talking about ourselves and talking about ourselves in really positive ways that show our strengths, show our values. Because from a very young age, we've been taught, you don't want to do that because, you know, people think you think this about you, you think you're so cool, you think you're this or that. And so we really contain that. And so I get the privilege of saying, let's stop the containment and let's show the world how great you are. And so that I have to say is probably one of the most fun um, parts of my work that I do right now, in addition to obviously, um, all the work that I'm doing on mindful stepping since that just launched. So I would say those are my two main focuses right now, or fo foci, or focus. foci. <laughs> plural. Foci. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the the tools or let's say the top two tools that you would recommend for um you know millennials because that's mainly who you're working with you know um out of college right i mean are the 23 right. 20 22 24 year old um what are some of the tools that people watching that are in that age group can kind of use or that you use to really help them for the most part i have not necessarily used tools. I usually, it's through my walking, through talking with them. And again, that's one of the other reasons, one of the main reasons that I did do mindful stepping so that people now do have a tool that they can use independent right. of me in terms of the question. So that's one thing now that particularly, I actually just met with somebody, um, did a consultation with somebody over the phone who is not certain if they can um, have the resources to work one-to-one. -one. And for someone like that, I I said, there's, there are tools out there that you can, you know, you, that you can use. Um, and so I always feel like you want to, or I always want to make sure that people are, um, I meet them where they are. And if it works for them, great. And if not, I want to make sure that I kind of help them. And so find other ways. So mindful stepping was one of those things that I wanted to do so that people could take this and they could do it as much as they want on their own, independent of me. Another tool though, since, since our um, CAP class, I use VIA a lot. And I think on one of your previous interviews, I, I believe you brought it up and that's the values in action. And since it's an online and there's no charge to use to do the assessment, it's a strengths basis, based, strengths based <laughs> assessment that is also a tongue twister. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and since there's no charge, I love it. Now with that said, I do, and I'll be interested to hear what you think, Tildy. Um, I do, in many ways, like um, if someone is able to pay for the, um, the report. And so it's free to get just your results, but if you want a report, it's an extra $20. And I do think what's nice about that is it shows, the free report will um, rank order your um, strengths. However, the report will show you the difference between what your, um, your greatest strength is and then how it, where it falls because sometimes you'll get the results you'll think i'm shocked this is at the bottom of the list when it really isn't that low down and so the full report will give you perspective so that's another one that i highly recommend because there's no cost to it and i think we have so much that we can benefit from by um really playing to our strengths right. and our values Absolutely. no i completely agree with the with getting a more in-depth report you know because there's yeah you can see the list but what exactly does that mean what does that say exactly. you know, what 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 uh, what do all those i mean because there's what 24 of them and yes. it's a little yep. <laughs> you know you look down the list and my sister actually took the test or took the survey and i was so happy and she was like oh my god i said um, and there was some things on there that really surprised her and surprised me too. Um, but so it was really interesting. And she's like, Oh, she says, I'm horrible because of this. I said, no, I said, it's not like, it's not that kind of test. <laughs> you know, <Exactly. laughs> we're all winners. Yeah. Everybody's a winner. <laughs> I'm like, this is just showing us what's really important to us right now. I said, and, and, you know, like, you, you know, you know, this is that, you know, three of them will stay constant pretty much for, 
for our whole lives, while maybe two of them will kind of change depending on, on the, the time in life that we're in or if we're going through something in our life, you know, something will be elevated during that time frame. Absolutely. When I love that you brought that up, one, one thing that people often ask me is along those lines, but slightly different is they'll call in, this is particularly um, the women clients who I work with who are mothers, they'll call, I want to work with you because I really need to be more balanced and my life just feels so out of whack and not balanced. And that's one of the main things that I um, try and talk to people about right at the beginning is it's really, if we can move away from balance and replace that with fulfillment, because I think we set ourselves up for this unrealistic expectation that our lives are going to be like a perfectly sliced pizza pie where all the slices are even. And the reality is going back to what you just said, with each phase, our life looks so different. It feels so different. And we might be capitalizing on different strengths, different values, and also what's, what's in our life, what's being required of us and where we want to prioritize and place our attention. And so by, you know, if you speed ahead to the end of life, you think, okay, would I rather people think Eileen was the most balanced person I have ever met in my life, or Eileen was the most fulfilled person. And that fulfillment person picture is personally what I prefer and it's going to look different at my life today versus my life in 10 years, 10 years later. And so what fulfillment looks like to me is going to be quite different in those stages. And it's going to be different than yours. And it gets us out of that social comparison too. So I don't have to worry what Tildy's doing. I worry about what, what feels good and connects with my heart. So it's, yeah. that's um, and, along those lines. Uh, funny that you bring that up because I think, I really think that that's probably the number one thing for women is that we have to work on is not comparing ourselves to others. Yes. Yes. Or thinking that or worrying about other people's expectations, you know, instead of following our own intuition, our own hearts and our desires um, and, and really following our intuition, (laughs) you know, and, and knowing how to do that. Absolutely. And I think that gets back to being really confident on, who am I and what do I bring to the table? And if we don't feel comfortable or confident or knowledgeable about who we are and what we bring to the table at any given stage, that's when the insecurity pops up. Um, I have a one client in particular who we've, been, we've talked a lot about this and it, it is, it's a thread that does weave through my clients, I would say for sure. Um, and there's, um, she'll often say, you know, well, I look at this person And they have X, Y, or Z or jealousy, you know, whether it's jealousy or insecurity, they both creep up. And so what we've really been working on is, okay, how can we look at that person as inspirational? What does that person do that inspires you? And I think that's where it is, because if you're looking at somebody else who you feel like has something I don't, or they're doing something I don't, how can they inspire you to be your best self? Right. So what about it is getting to you that you want more of? And then how can we bring that into your life? So it's not about becoming them, but they're, how do we feel inspired by them? Right, exactly. And, and kind of instead of being like them, maybe just a better version of ourselves that includes those Absolutely. characteristics, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it might be something that I feel inspired by this person because they're always learning. They're, you know, seeking out information to grow and learn. And it might not be what they're growing and learning, the area that they're growing and learning in, but it's just that fact of feeling alive and engaged in life. So how does that translate into growing yourself? Besides the VIA survey, is there anything else? Cause I know for me, you know, when I, um, taking the VIA survey was huge for, for values based training. Right. Um, but aligning that also with like strength finder or standout, you know, for, and maybe that's more along the lines on leadership. Um, right. But really using other tools and combining them. Is there anything else that you use with your clients that helps them? Yeah. You know, I don't, I tend to do, um, individualized work. So if I'm working with someone and they're, um, if we're having a hard time uncovering something, whether it's um, interest, skills, values, I, I do my, I have exercises either that I 
is a standard exercise that I use with that I've created that I use with my clients or I'll custom do. So I really, again, I'm constantly looking at the client as the individual and thinking, how can I best meet their needs? And so much of it is what comes up during our walk. And so it's unique to each person. So I tend not to do standardized um, assessments. Um, I really don't. VIA is the first assessment that I've actually integrated into my practice. Yeah. And so it's, it's more just doing my own. Um, each time at the end of every walk with a client, then I, and I like them not to um, take notes or anything. I want them to really be present and engaged in our work together. And for some reason, my brain through the walk, I can remember everything that happens. I don't remember what I wore yesterday, but I can remember an entire walk. And it's because it's the movement helps my brain remember. And I remember where we talked about each thing. So I then send a kind of bullet point recap of highlights and then what I call action items. So between each meeting, they have action items for the, um, to complete before we meet again. And they're agreed upon actions. And so, but they're really not assessments other than the VIA. Um, so that's really the only one. But I know there are tons of great tools out there. I just don't, don't use them. And in graduate school, we did everything from Myers-Briggs to SkillScan and StrengthsFinder and all of those. Yeah. Um, but I really, I, I like um, uncovering answers through my connection with the client, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. Um, Aside from the comparison factor, what other commonalities do you see with your clients since they're, they're predominantly women? Absolutely. Uh, I would say there are probably two other really common themes. One is um, kind of that go, home, go big or go home. I tend to work with many women who have... Um, feel like they've accomplished um, good things in their life up until whatever point they then meet with me. And unless they're doing something huge, it's not good enough. And so um, really thinking, um, helping them rethink this. And again, it, sorry to keep going back to the cards, but it goes back to that bite-sized bits, those little things. And it, how do you go small and stay in the game? That's where I'm at is each small little bite. If you do one teeny tiny thing, whether it's spending 10 minutes on whatever goal it is you have each day is a lot more effective than not spending any time on this goal that you hope is going to be huge one day. So um, that, that would be one of the big things is feeling comfortable, paring things down and going small and staying in the game. So that's one big, big thing. Um, and then the other I would say is confidence. It's confidence is, I think we touched on that. Um, and I remember walking with a client and she said, I just, okay, I'm really going to do it once I feel confident again. And I said, you know, <laughs> confidence is not going to knock on your door. It is never going to come and say, hello, you're confident. So um, really it's helping, helping class remember when they were at top of their game right. and knowing that person in them. Sometimes I'll say in this, while it's not a, an assessment, but one thing that I love doing with clients is saying, pull out a picture when you were at top of your game, when you felt really strong and you were doing what you wanted in life, pull that picture out, pin it on your door. You know, some people will do that for, you know, they want to get back in shape. I'm not so concerned about that. I want you to be back in mental shape where you feel confident. So pull out that strength picture and remember that person, you, it's always been you and they're in your body right now. And so how do we get back to that strong person? And that's where you start with your confidence. And then we build from there to get back on your feet again. You know, and I think we often forget who we are. I mean, and how we got to be where we are. You know, um, it wasn't Absolutely. somebody I was working with asked me, you know, do you think you're brave? I was like, well, I think so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> kind of nonchalantly. And he says, are you kidding me? He says, look at all the things that, that you've done throughout your lifetime. You know, he says, you stand, you're like courageous, you know? <laughs> and I thought, and I, I mean, until that day, and when he listed off some of the things that I've done throughout my lifetime, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm a badass. <laughs> you know, like, yes, you are. I, I've told you in class, I constantly would look at you think, I am so impressed with 
everything that you've done in such a short life, you know? I mean, it's, it's quite inspirational. Oh, and where does bravery fall? Do you know where bravery falls on your VIA? I have no idea. I have no idea. I mean, mine was, uh, the, my number one was justice and fairness, which makes sense. Of the work. Yes, absolutely. And also just more so on the transcendental, I guess, you know, with the, the gratitude. Spiritual. Yeah, the more spiritual mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Um, but I have no idea where bravery fell. I'm, sh- I'm sure it was somewhere in there. <laughs> The words off the charts. That's, <laughs> it's so high it didn't even rank. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but but even like I've said before, doing this show was a fear factor because I had actually thought about it for two years, you know, and it was um I wasn't being brave because I was kind of shying away from putting myself out there and in front of the camera, you know, instead of being behind the camera. Um so, and stuff so you know susan um our friend susan from the cap class you know i think one day she said something about stops playing small you know and i thought that really hit me hard that day and and i thought for 2016 you know i'm not going to play small anymore i'll put myself out there and just see what happens you know Absolutely. Well, and you get to the point and, and again, that's where I feel like I got to that point with um, developing the cards was I got to the point where I'm, I'm sick of watching everybody else move forward with a, with a great idea that I had. I'm thrilled. They, they move forward with it, but I'm sick of myself not moving forward. So I, I think there's, there's plenty of room for all of us to get out there and do great stuff. Um, but at the same time, I'm watching people going, oh, I had that idea. Oh, and it's like, you know what? It's time to, you know, applaud them and say, awesome job. You've now inspired me to move forward. And, I, and look at, for you, all these lives you're touching by playing big and being brave. I mean, it's, it makes, it's making differences in so many people's lives by you taking that leap of faith. Thank you. Thank you. And that's Absolutely. My, my goal, you know, when I first started this, this uh, company, Woman Ours, I told myself, if I can help one woman, that's all, that's success to me. Absolutely. And I still feel that way. And so the encouragement that I get after each of these shows from people sending me private messages is what really keeps me motivated, you know, to do, keep doing this and to keep making more, um, creating more content that gives women the inspiration and motivation that they need which is what you know i was fortunate enough to be surrounded by incredible women who motivated me and still motivate me and still inspire me you know um and but some women don't have those resources don't even know about some of the resources that are out there for them so my goal is to bring people like you to light you know, and, and tell people about you and others like you who are doing amazing work with women and transforming people's lives one-on-one or in groups or however that, however you do it in the future. You know, I, I really, really respect you and all the work that you do, Eileen. Well, thank you. I, I feel so fortunate. I, I love the work I do and I love getting to just watch people blossom and, yeah. and get, you know, be the person who, who they're meant to be and live the life that they are, you know, that they can live. We all have so much potential and there's, there's so much good to be had and to give to the world. And I think we all, we all play a part. So thank yeah. you. And you know, it's, it's good to meet, um, well, to be the one walking the talk <laughs> you know and not just the talk you know my sisters and I have this have this saying uh, that we kind of check each other whenever we've been talking about something for way too long and um, one of us will say well are you gonna talk about it or be about it <laughs> you know <laughs> I love it, love it. Well, and think about it. For, for you getting up there and doing this show you've you'll be inspiring other people to be about it more, you know, and to stop talking about maybe doing this or maybe doing that and saying, you know what, I'm going for it. And I think the other thing, and this is one thing I've loved about watching your previous interviews is you're just human. 
And so you joke around, and even we talked about like, Tildy and I yesterday, or last night, night, late last night, we couldn't get the technology to work. And you just have fun with it, and you just, we're human, we're doing the best we can, and yeah. don't wait for perfection. Perfection doesn't exist, and just put out whatever you're supposed to put out in the world, do it short of perfect, and that's good enough. I know, I think last night we could have been like a, a sitcom, you know, with all <laughs> With all the technical blunders. <laughs> I don't think we'll be hired anytime soon no. to do a YouTube tutorial on technical, um, <laughs> on how to run a video conference. My, my, uh, product, my web produ producer, uh, Dave Curley, has his job secured. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. His job secured. <laughs> I, I am so, and again, if we all play to our gifts, there's plenty of work to be had. <laughs> we all need each other. That's the beauty of life. We all are, you know, we, we all We're need one together. another. <laughs> yes, we are. Well, thank you so Absolutely. much for being with us, uh, Eileen. Really appreciate your time, like I said, and just the energy and your positivity. I mean, obviously. Um, is just wonderful and I knew that when I heard you speak during our cap class you always had such insightful and wonderful um, enlightening things to say and I knew that I would be interviewing you <laughs> and I envisioned it and I'm so glad that you said yes <laughs> well, yeah. I have to say absolute an absolute pleasure i this is such a treat for me it's an honor i love love watching you i would say you know i'm trying to you know keep up with everything you're or keep up with watching everything you're doing you're in so doing so many cool things i'm like okay what is Tilde doing now that is so cool and i just you are making such i talk about imprints and people what imprint are you making you are making so many invaluable imprints on this world and in the lives of women and it's just, I, it's so exciting to watch you in action. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Tell people how they can get a hold of you and uh, get in touch with you and get the car. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. So you can get in touch with me through, um, it's, a, it's a mouthful, takeyourthoughtsforawalk.com. So that's my um, new URL for the mindful stepping. So takeyourthoughtsforawalk.com. And then also eileenshafer.com. And that would be I-L-E-N-E, Schaefer, S-C-H-A-F-F-E-R.com. And then also through LinkedIn. I am on LinkedIn. Um, and as I told Tilde during our test session yesterday, my um, website, just as I work with women in transition, my um, website also reflects transition. So I am in the process of completely changing my website after it being up and running for the last 12 years. It was ready for a redo. So, but those um, URLs will bring you to a holding page and um, you'll be able to, if you're interested in ordering Mindful Stepping, um, it has my email and you can email me. They did sell out right with my first batch sold out um, within a week. And so I, they're on um, order now and I've already started taking orders and I should be getting the next shipment next week. So I look forward to that's how you get the, the deck. Don't forget. This is what they, well, they, are they going to look different than these? The new they, they're going to, so the, the cover will be the same. There's just a little shift, a little bit of a shift in the, um, in the, um, warning. And then I've added three more cards. So it's a full deck of 30. So it's a walk a day and then if it's a 31 day you um month you get a day off so so you can do one not walk a day for 30 days um, and then take a day off or do another card twice um so yeah so i've added a few cards and made some minor edits and then it will have a printed box so right now it has just a plastic box um that was made to fit these cards now it will have a full printed box like a deck of cards okay awesome well and i want to remind people that <clears throat> this um, you can find we'll put your link below the video on our YouTube channel oh, as well. so we'll if you'll send me the link um, absolute links to to you and whatever projects that you're working on we'll go ahead and put them on the on the video underneath the video in our YouTube channel as well um, and any other information that you want to include in there we'll do that as well 
Um, I want to remind everybody that uh, these shows are being brought to you by Woman Ours, and it is our mission to bring you inspirational and educational content. And if you like what you see, really would love for you to subscribe to our uh, newsletter and find out what's happening uh, with upcoming events or online courses at womanars.com. Also would love for you to to like our page on Facebook, Twitter, and um, follow, subscribe to, to us on our YouTube channel. We have over a hundred videos there that you can tap into um, with stories and interviews like Eileen's that, that we've done in the past year or so. And uh, we'd love to get your feedback. Let us know how we're doing and, and the content that we're creating for you. Thank you for, for, for watching.